In this video, we're going to talk about another example of natural selection, a real-life example that you need to know about. In the previous video, we talked about Darwin's finches. Okay, that was also an example, but this is the next example that you need to know. Okay, so basically, a long time ago, a long time ago, um, in nature, okay, there was an environment just like this, okay, and there was nice trees and everything like that. Notice this tree, okay. Now, in this environment, there lived a lot of moths, okay, moths, right? Now, if we look at this tree bark, okay, we look at it, we zoom into this tree, we notice that the moths that survive the best are these ones, okay, these white grayish ones, okay, because they camouflage really well on the bark of the tree, right? Whereas these black ones stand out much more. And because they stand out much more, they, are, they can very easily be, uh, be, be seen by, by birds and therefore eaten, okay? So we call this a peppered moth, this one here, a peppered moth, okay? Now, as I said, these white gray ones can camouflage well, and so they will survive and pass on their genetics. So in this environment, long time ago, the white peppered moth was way more common, okay? Way more common because it kept surviving and it kept passing on its genetics, Whereas these black ones kept dying, and so they ended up being very scarce. Now, this trait, this color trait of being either this one or this one, is determined by your genetics. So, to be white, you must be autosomal recessive. Okay, if you don't know what this is, uh, you gotta watch some genetics videos. You learn this in the topic of genetics, but it basically means that the you need to have both um, alleles or both genes from your parents so each parent must give you must give you the gene for for um being white okay must give you the gene for being gray i mean okay but to be this one each parent must give you the gene for being black or just one parent needs to give you the gene for being black okay but anyways this is not important to understand for this video so now continuing with continuing continuing with the story um, later on, in the mid-19th century, okay, um, a lot of the Industrial Revolution started happening. So a lot of buildings were being built, a lot of pollution was being created, okay? Now, this pollution ended up destroying some of these organisms that made the tree look white or gray, okay? These organisms um, are little plants that grew on here that made it look white and gray. So all this pollution killed it, okay? And, and in addition, the pollution... Um, started accumulating on the tree, okay? It started depositing on the tree, making it look black, okay? So the tree started looking black, okay? And notice now, the moths that live in this place are, look what's going to happen. Which one do you see the easiest now? You see this white one, okay? Before this industrial evolution, the white one would, would be able to survive really easily because it camouflaged. But now, the black one will survive very easily because it can go on the bark of the tree and not be seen. So, this, this now changed things because now these white ones are going to keep dying and the black ones will keep living. And so what they noticed was that far more black moths were noticed. And the white ones became very scarce, okay? So this was an example of how changing the environment can lead to evolution because right here um, all the black all the moths were basically white but now due to this change in environment now over some time the white moths st stopped being stopped existing and only the black moths came and and developed now after this um, Britain started the 1956 clear air act in which basically they stopped building these factories and prevented pollution from being made and so the trees started recovering and going back to normal and so now they noticed again that these white ones were able to camouflage and so they, they through evolution these white ones started multiplying and becoming more again and the black ones became scarce okay so this is uh, this story is essentially the perfect example another perfect example showing that showing um natural selection okay how your environment can select who survives and who dies and this leads to an evolution over a long period of time the, um, deciding which organisms will become and survive now here is a real image of what i'm talking about so you can see here's the tree bark and these white ones can camouflage on the tree bark before the revolution because they really blend in with black ones really stand out and then after the evolution when everything got darkened 
the white one now stands out and the black one is easier to hide, right? So I hope, I hope this video makes sense and, I, I, and you need to know one more example of natural selection which I'll make in the next video. So you, you know now um, Darwin's finishes and this is called industrial melanism, okay, the moth story.